first injury report, they have to. So all these injuries are probably been built up for quite mm-hmm. some time. Some more extensively, like they gave a little bit more of a timeline with Sam Basayo. Yeah. Kyle Bradish did say that he had an injection. Yeah. He's going to start his throwing prank program tomorrow, actually, which tells you immediately that this has been something that they were aware of and have been working with because mm-hmm. this was something that just popped up. One, he wouldn't have had the injection. I don't think you can throw for a few weeks or like a month after the injection. So the fact that he's going to start his throwing program tomorrow shows you that he is well a good bit into his rehab sort of process. Yeah, and honestly, I think the rehab is just getting going, if I'm yeah. being completely honest, and I'll explain that a little bit more. But that was the reason why, in my mind, the Corbin mm-hmm. Burns move happened the way it did. I, the Orioles were always interested in, in going after a top-end pitcher. Yeah. But knowing this information, the timing of it seems even more right. And now Corbin Burns is going to be there. Be there. You're going to have Grayson Rodriguez. You have Dean Kramer. And you still have other options to be in the starting rotation, whether that be Tyler Wells, Cole Irving, you name it, there's guys that you can choose from. Now, with the Kyle Bradish situation, a couple of things you're going to hear. So one, Rock's just saying UCL sprain. And some people think a sprain is just, oh, it's everything's okay. Then Jeff Patson reports, oh, it's a UCL sprain that has a tear. That was his report. Personally, for me, this is where it gets very, very tricky. And I just want to tell Birdland, as much as you want to stay optimistic, and I want – Kyle to, to be out there. He's going to do everything in his power to try to pitch this year. No doubt in my mind. But I think it is fair to say that you cannot hold your breath that Kyle Bradish is actually going to go out and pitch this year. I know that people are going to be like, whoa, whoa, Ryan, the sky is falling. No, I'm not trying. I'm just trying to be realistic with you guys. I'm talking about Kyle Bradish's career here. Mm-hmm. Friend, know, of the show. friend of the program, friend of the show. He's a guy that we're looking at the long term here. This isn't Game 7 World Series try to get him back. And if there is a tear, yeah. more than likely, it's going to need to have some sort of rehab, whether it's you think he can do it without surgery. Okay, more times than not, there has to be something that has to happen for him to get back. Every pitcher is different. The other example I want to use on this different pitcher, though, but Dylan Tate last year, the expectation mm-hmm. was he was going to pitch last year. When you're injured coming into the season, it is very, very hard, specifically what part of your body's injured. Yeah. So in this case, anything to do with your arm, elbow, is all automatically you're going to be really cautioned or uh, you're going to really have like a red flag, caution tape. You got to be careful. So it's a bummer. It definitely stings, but definitely not the end of the world either. But I just want Birdland to be realistic with that one. The other ones, though, guys, I'm not concerned. John Means, uh, that's something that needs to be figured out, but – he I'm had everything yeah. cleaned up. It just clearly there's been some complications, obviously, after his post John Tommy John and coming back to pitch last year. Yeah. Uh well, first with the uh Bradish sprain uh tear thing, from this is what I was got from Twitter, and this is what a lot of people were talking about. Apparently, I guess a sprain in the UCL is always like just like a grade one tear. Like they're different. So right. like like you said, just wait for more details to come out. Wait for, you know. Kyle's going to do his best to get back on the field. But then John Means is, I wouldn't even really call it an injury. It's more just the Orioles wanted to give him more rest after his, you know, he had apparently some elbow flare-ups after the playoffs, and they just wanted to, I guess, give him more time to recover and come back full strength. It's not that he's injured, really. He's just not as far into his offseason and getting back into his routine as other pitchers. Yeah, and I mean, look, you don't want to cut corners with any of these guys. I mean, especially with Kyle Bradish, who, look, however long this takes, and we don't know the full extent of it yet. So, again, I don't want to speculate on what Mm -hmm. it is. But as Ryan said, I mean, this is about a guy's career, right? I I get the excitement. I get how fun this team is going to be. But you don't want to risk, you know, if that thing isn't fully ready and he goes out there and pitches and he just absolutely tears it up 10 times worse. Yeah. You know, that's not, who's that good for? It's good for nobody. Mm-hmm. So with all the injuries, they're, they're going to take the cautious approach, I think, as they should, because it, Ryan's right. It's not game seven of the World Series, right? We're, we're in day two of spring training, and I'm not sitting here and, and going to say the sky is falling because of it. Sure, it's still not fun to talk about, but I still think this team's exciting, and I'm sure we'll get into it. They do have depth in the rotation now, especially after acquiring Corbin Burns. So we'll yep. talk about that too. And so, and if you guys don't believe what we're saying here, by the way, Mike Elias actually touched on it today. And he is always going to be more optimistic and he's not going to show his hand. So 
we're giving a little bit more background, but let's let Mike Elias, if you don't believe what we're talking about, let's play what he talked about earlier today when he was asked about the injury situation. A pitcher typically would, and in the course of that, he detected some irritation in his elbow, his throwing elbow, uh, such that we wanted to get that imaged and checked out. And um, that diagnosis revealed an injury that we would characterize as a sprain of his ulnar collateral ligament. And as a result, uh, he's behind. Um, we've got that treated with a PRP injection. The early returns are very encouraging and everything is in a really good spot right now. And he's going to start his throwing progression tomorrow. Uh, but that progression is gonna be something that takes some time and uh, it, it's, everything is pointed in the right direction and going well right now at this time. Um, but I'm not at a point where I want to start putting a timeline on when we're going to see him in major league action, but right now. So there it is. Again, he's you're going to hear all the words. Encouraged, things are going well. And rightfully, right now, to be honest, that's a good sign. That's yeah. good that nothing's aggravating, but the other part of it is he hasn't done anything yet. He's mm -hmm. just been resting his arm. It's going to yeah. be now, as he starts to throw a little bit more, how does that respond to it? And it's going to be a very particular process. This isn't something where you're going to go balls to the wall. And when I'm saying throwing progression for things, it might start at 20 feet, 30 yeah. feet. This is not this is not something you're going to ramp up. Oh, hey, Kyle, next week, let's get on the bump. Yeah, that I believe happening. they said uh, today he was uh, tossing underhand. That was he could run and toss underhand today. So. Like you said, the progressions, it's going to be a progression. It's going to start with, okay, now let's just see how your elbow feels after we do this for a little bit. I, I think the biggest thing, though, is, you know, about the whole, like, the sky is falling. As much as Kyle Bradish dominated in the second half last year and how good he was for the Orioles, and he really did become their ace, he he's not the whole team. It's not the... You know, it's the Orioles are no longer where it's one guy, and that's all we have. This team does have depth, like you talked about, Kevin. We have stars. We have Adley Rutschman, yeah. Gunnar Henderson, you know, Corbin Burns, Grayson Rodriguez. There's so many aspects to this team and great pieces that it sucks to lose a player like Kyle. I'm not. We're not going to sit here and say that. Oh, Orioles are going to rebound like nothing happened. It's going to be. It's a hole. I mean, losing a player of that caliber is never fun. But the Orioles are in a position where they have so much talent where if it was go if you were going to lose a player like Kyle, this was the year where it you I think we'll see less of an impact because you went out and got a guy like Corbin Burns who can step in and take over that number one role immediately. Yeah, I and mean, don't forget too, by the way, the other guy that I'm gonna talk about in a minute here, Grayson Rodriguez. Yeah. Grayson Rodriguez. Pretty good. Pretty good prospect he was, and then he was a pretty damn good MLB pitcher last year, especially in the second half. And we have some breakdowns here to explain why that is the case a little bit later on. And for those that are new to the show, hit that like and subscribe button. We do this every Monday and Thursday and wherever we kind of feel like when we have certain guests on. We had Cedric Mullins on last Saturday. Uh, we've had Tyler Wells on. We've had Dean Kramer on. Who else am I missing here, guys? Kyle Bradish. Kyle Bradish. <laughs> we just talked about him. Uh, a lot of them, and we expect to have more and more really insightful interviews and times moving forward, but those days will be the special shows. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are new and you're in the comments, let us know what you're thinking, have any questions. We'd love to answer more and we'll try to answer as much as I will we say, can. Go love, ahead. love Tyler Wells coming. I think people are really forgetting about the first half that Tyler Wells put together last year before the innings kind of, and his arm, uh, you know, start getting fatigued. But Tyler Wells was this team's ace last year to start the year. Well, he not even for to start the year for, for the, the first, whole first half. half. He was yeah. fantastic, and then he he things didn't go as well for really just a few starts, and then he went back, came back up in the bullpen role, and he was great. He was fantastic. So many things to 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 unlayer here, and you're not winning a World Series in what is it on February fifteenth? Got it right now. Got it right. <laughs> Got it right. Uh, I was about to. You, Zach, this song's too young for you. I was about to say, get it right, get it tight. You have zero idea what no, lyrics that's no. from. 